Most folks probably know Jerry Mathers for his iconic role as the titular role of Theodore the Beaver Cleaver on Leave it to Beaver. The Cleaver family, which consisted of June and Ward Cleaver, as well as Beaver's older brother Wally, became synonymous with the idealized image of the American suburban family in the mid-20th century. The show was the creation of co-writers Joe Connolly and Bob Mosher, who modeled the show's characters, conversations, and plot lines after personal experiences from their own childhoods as well as those of their children. It gave audiences an intimate look into middle-class American boyhood, and Jerry Mathers was the perfect casting choice to portray the show's youthful lead. While Leave it to Beaver never delved into serious adult subject matter, Mathers would eventually have to face the realities of adulthood. Join us as we discuss one of the most serious issues that he had to face head-on some 30 years after Leave it to Beaver wrapped up production. The Making of a Child Star Jerry Mathers was born in Sioux City, Iowa in 1948. His father was a high school principal, and he grew up in the San Fernando Valley area of L.A., after his family relocated shortly after he was born. Mathers has three siblings, two brothers, including the Hollywood cinematographer and director of photography Jimmy Mathers, and one sister. Mathers' career began when he was just two and was selected to appear as a child model for an advertisement for a department store. Not long after, he appeared in an ad for Pet Milk alongside vaudeville comic Ed Wynn. In time, he landed early roles in films such as 1954's This Is My Love and Alfred Hitchcock's 1955 black comedy The Trouble with Harry, in which he portrayed the son of Shirley MacLaine who finds a corpse in the woods. Mathers reportedly landed his career-defining role of the Beaver after telling the show's production team he'd rather be at a Cub Scout meeting than auditioning for the role. The producers found Mathers' innocent honesty to be endearing. Mathers went on to play the Beaver for six years, appearing in every episode of the program. He also made history when he became the first child actor to cut a deal to get a percentage of the show's merchandising revenue. That landmark deal continues to be profitable for him to this day, seeing as how Leave it to Beaver still generates revenue with reruns and memorabilia sales even after all these years. Mathers briefly dabbled in a music career in 1962 when he recorded two songs released on a 45 RPM vinyl record. In high school, he was also in a band called Beaver and the Trappers, but he eventually gave up on his dreams of becoming a musical star. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for more about Jerry Mather. Jerry Mather's Life After Beaver After Leave it to Beaver wrapped in 1963, Mathers retired from acting to instead focus on his education. He attended Notre Dame High School in Sherman Oaks, California, before enlisting in the U.S. Air Force Reserve in 1966. While he never saw any action in the military and was stationed in the U.S. throughout his stint in the force, a rumor began to circulate in 1969 that he'd been killed in the Vietnam War. Fortunately, this rumor was completely unfounded, and its origins remain unclear. He later poked fun at this baseless claim in 1980 when he and Tony Dow appeared alongside Bill Murray on Saturday Night Live's Weekend Update segment. After being discharged from the military, Mathers majored in philosophy at the University of California, Berkeley, and graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree. While there, he met his first wife, Diana Platt. The couple married in 1974, but divorced in 81. After earning his degree, Mathers took a job working as a loan officer at a bank before taking his savings from his acting career to kickstart his career in real estate development. In 1978, he decided to take another stab at acting. That year, he and his former Leave it to Beaver co-star Tony Dow starred in a comedy play called Boeing Boeing, which ran for four weeks in Kansas City, Missouri. Mathers and Dow then hit the road together, touring the dinner theater circuit, appearing in a production of a play called So Long Stanley. During that tour, Mathers met his second wife, Rhonda Gehring, and they ended up having three children together but divorced in 1997. After briefly working as a radio DJ in Anaheim, California, Mathers reprised his role as the Beaver in 1983 for the television reunion movie Still the Beaver, which featured the bulk of the original show's cast. The made-for-TV film was so successful it spawned a sequel series of the same name, which aired on the Disney Channel starting in 1984 before being picked up by TBS and broadcast syndication. After making that jump, it was given a new name, the new Leave it to Beaver. That show wrapped up in 1989 after four seasons. 
In the 90s, Mathers guest starred in shows like Parker Lewis Can't Lose, Diagnosis Murder, and Vengeance Unlimited. In 1998, he portrayed himself in Married with Children. That same year, he published his memoir and Jerry Mathers as The Beaver. In 2007, he made his Broadway debut in the Tony Award-winning musical Hairspray in the production's starring role of Wilbur Turnblad. Since then, he hasn't done much in the line of acting, but in 2018 and 2019, he could be seen promoting classic TV shows, including Leave it to Beaver, on the MeTV network. Mathers married his third wife, Teresa Modnick, in 2011, and they recently celebrated their 10-year anniversary. Jerry Mathers' Life-Changing Diagnosis In 1996, Mathers was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. In 97, he received some very grim news when he went in for his yearly checkup. The message was clear. If he didn't alter his lifestyle and diet to address his diabetes, he would likely only have three to five years to live. In 2017, Mathers told Fox News he was, quote, living the good life at the time when his doctor informed him. He was operating a side business as a caterer and was providing his services on a ton of motion picture and television sets, feeding 100 to 200 crew members at a time. Because of this line of work, he was naturally surrounded by food all the time. And Mathers loves to cook. Besides acting and working in film production, the culinary arts happened to be one of his biggest passions. Working as a Hollywood caterer involves sitting down and eating meals with production personnel, sometimes up to six times a day. Because of this, he started packing on the pounds and quickly became quite unhealthy. But it didn't seem to matter at the time because he was making a lot of money doing what he loved. And the majority of people he surrounded himself with were also as overweight. So his unhealthy lifestyle had become normalized. But Mathers did the sensible thing and sold his catering business and went on a strict diet. He also started exercising regularly, walking six to eight miles a day. Some 20 years later, when Mathers did that interview with Fox, he proudly shared that he was then only considered to be pre-diabetic and was no longer at risk of imminent death. One of his biggest challenges, he said, was keeping his diet whenever he would go out to eat. He explained that sticking to his guns and not making compromises is a daily struggle. Mathers also made it clear he wasn't cured by any means. The changes he made and the risk factors he had to contend with weren't temporary. He'd have to deal with them for the rest of his life. To keep him on the straight and narrow path, Mathers has since committed himself to educating the public on diabetes. If he can help save the lives of his fans, perhaps he could also save himself. Today, Mathers leads lectures across the nation to warn those willing to hear him out about the dangers of the disease and what they can do to prevent it. Fitting in Famous for playing Beaver, Mathers had a good life after the show ended. Even though he was famous, he was able to live a normal life. His journey to stardom started in a department store where he was spotted with his mom. Leave it to Beaver was a popular show about a young boy's funny adventures. It was on TV for six seasons and had more than 200 episodes. In 1963, when the show finished, Mathers was 14 years old and ready to start high school. Unlike many child actors who struggled to adjust to life after a series or a movie wraps, Mathers had a different experience. He did several things to keep busy and maintain a balanced perspective on life. He joined his high school football team. He played center and linebacker even though he wasn't the biggest kid on the team. This experience was crucial in his transition from the TV world as it allowed him to be part of a group and build a solid circle of friends. But Mathers' football career didn't last long. During his senior year, he quit after a big freshman knocked him around on the practice field. This freshman turned out to be John Vela, who later played as an offensive lineman in the NFL. When football didn't pan out, Mathers enlisted in the Air Force, serving for six years. This decision was another significant step in his journey and it allowed him to serve his country and gain valuable life experiences. But he always wanted to go to college, so following his time in the military, he embarked on a new journey at the prestigious University of California, Berkeley, where he majored in philosophy. During his time in school, Mathers started playing around with investments at a Berkeley bank. The personnel at the bank got to know him and even offered him a job, which he took. After dealing with big amounts of money for three years, Mathers learned that some of the biggest transactions involved real estate. He then dabbled in real estate and even owned a pawn shop, further expanding his skill set and experience. Acting eventually came calling again for Mathers. Starting in 1983, he was in an episode of The Love Boat and the new version of Leave It to Beaver, the new Leave It to Beaver. Despite being one of the most recognizable child stars television has ever seen, 
Jerry Mathers grew up like so many other kids his age, leading a life that made him very happy. Memories One of Mathers' most cherished memories is the rap party that followed the taping of the show's final episode, Family Scrapbook. It was directed by Hugh Beaumont, who played family patriarch Ward Cleaver. Mathers recalls it as a massive party on their soundstage, where all the actors, writers, and writers' assistants came together. Even people who hadn't been on the show in a while dropped by. Despite knowing they probably wouldn't see each other as much again, the atmosphere was filled with camaraderie and friendship. As one of his final TV appearances, Family Scrapbook holds a special place in his heart. This episode was unique as it was shot entirely in one day and conceived as a clip show that would look back on the six-season window of time in the Cleaver household. Mathers remembers it as a special episode, not just because it was the last, but because his TV dad directed him. He has fond memories of his time working with the other members of the Cleaver clan, including Barbara Billingsley and Tony Dow, who played his on-screen mother and older brother. He remembers them as friends, valued colleagues, and their passing in 2022, respectively, left a void in his life. One of his most personal mementos from his life on the show was his green hat. This hat, which was originally his, became a signature part of Beaver's wardrobe, after the writers and producers liked it when Mathers wore it on the first day of filming. Despite the show being in black and white, the hat was actually green. He still owns it today, a tangible reminder of his time as Beaver. Among Mathers' most treasured memories is an unusual one, as it involves a rumor about his own demise. While it's hard to fathom, he holds the rumor that circulated around his death during the Vietnam War close to his heart. While he served in the California Air National Guard, he never went to Vietnam. But the rumor persisted, and Mathers even went on Saturday Night Live to correct the historical record, a moment he recalls with a chuckle. Why he left Few characters in television history are as well known as Theodore Beaver Cleaver. But when the curtains fell on the show in 1963, Mathers made a surprising decision to step back from his burgeoning acting career. In an interview with Fox News Digital, Mathers opened up about his decision to take a break from the industry, revealing that the conclusion of the final season provided him with an opportunity to live a normal life, which was a stark contrast to his experiences as a child star. He expressed that the end of the show came at the right time. He had a desire to participate in sports, something he couldn't do while working at the studio. Joining the track and football teams was something he really wanted to do. And it gave him the opportunity to have a lot of good friends, which added to his enjoyment of his new, normal life. Interestingly, Mathers wasn't the only one who was excited when Leave it to Beaver ended. The production crew and other actors seemed all ready to move on with their lives. Mathers confessed that while they weren't tired of the show, it was a lot of work. They had to be at the studio every day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and often had PR work to do on the weekends. For Mathers, it was time to move on. He was getting ready to go to high school, and his co-star, Tony Dow, was preparing for college, something they couldn't do if they were still on the show. Throughout his journey as a child star, Mathers' family, especially his mother, played a significant role. His mother took good care of him, helping him cope with the challenges and attention that came with his fame. Mathers had been working since he was two and loved going to the studio. It was a fun place with a lot of fun people, and he never had any problems with it. Mathers' smooth transition from being a child celebrity to facing other aspects of life was made possible because his family supported him. Ultimately, his choice to step away from acting following the conclusion of the show was driven by his yearning for a regular life, the unwavering support of his family, and the shared desire of the cast and crew to pursue new paths. Only cast member alive Jerry Mathers now holds a unique distinction. He's the last surviving cast member. The show, which aired from 1957 to 63, gave viewers a warm and fuzzy look at the Cleaver household. This included the ever-patient mother, June, played by Barbara Billingsley, and the wise and understanding father, Ward, played by Hugh Beaumont. Older brother, Wally, was brought to life by Tony Dow, and of course, Beaver was played by Mathers. Over the years, the original cast members have sadly passed away. Beaumont was the first to leave us in 1982, followed by Billingsley in 2010, and most recently Dow in 2022. This has left Mathers as the sole torchbearer of the main cast, a role he carries with a mix of pride and nostalgia. Desire to play the character again Despite the years since Leave it to Beaver ended, Mathers still holds a special place in his heart for the character. 
In a recent interview, he expressed his openness of reprising the role, but this time as a grandfather. He mentioned he'd want to read the script first and ensure it adhered to the same morals and values that the original show upheld. Dow didn't know he wanted to be an actor. Tony Dow was born in Hollywood on April 13, 1945. He got into acting by sheer happenstance when he was 11. In an interview he gave to Fox News, Dow recalled how he was a swimmer and the junior diving champion that held a national record by the time he was nine. While training at the Hollywood Athletic Club, he met a lifeguard who happened to be an actor. The lifeguard told Dow's mother he was going on an audition for a TV series in which they were searching for actors to play a father and son duo. And because Tony bore a striking resemblance to him, he figured bringing him along might be the only way he could land the role. So after gaining his mother's consent, Dow donned a blue suit and went to the audition. He had no idea what to expect, but everything about this new and exciting experience intrigued him. Being alongside his friend from the athletic club also put him at ease. Things didn't go as planned. Dow walked out of the audition with the part while his buddy didn't. The show in question was titled Johnny Wildlife, and it would have been the first color program on TV to feature a wildlife photographer alongside his son. While that show never amounted to anything, possibly because it was a bit ahead of its time, another show began development that was called Wally and the Beaver that did get greenlit, although it was later renamed Leave it to Beaver. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already and stick around for more about Tony Dow. Leave it to Beaver was a modest hit. While Leave it to Beaver never managed to crack the Nielsen Top 30 ratings during its original run, primarily due to the fact that it premiered during an era when westerns were the big thing, it has since become known as one of the most iconic and trailblazing shows of its age. In fact, reruns of the series can still be seen in practically every country worldwide. Leave it to Beaver told the wholesome story of the happy, carefree life of Wally Cleaver, played by Dow, his younger brother Theodore Beaver Cleaver, played by Jerry Mathers, and their parents, played by Barbara Billingsley and Hugh Beaumont. After its initial season, Beaver moved from CBS to ABC and remained on that network for its five remaining seasons. Despite the fact that the ratings were never entirely in the show's favor, something magical was happening in the fictional town of Mayfield that ended up standing the test of time. The series creators, Bob Mosher and Joe Connolly, who penned the scripts from the majority of the series' early episodes, based a lot of the humor of the show on their own lives. Both writers had children of their own, and they knew how to take their personal experiences raising a family and translate that into a television show that felt relatable. They ended up telling their stories from a child's point of view instead of from an adult's perspective, such as how previous offerings like Father Knows Best had. Dow told Fox that he can't think of another show, besides perhaps The Wonder Years, that has gone that route. Tony believes that the way Leave it to Beaver told its story through a kid's eyes made the series such a memorable and meaningful experience. Even though the show's ratings weren't the greatest, it was still considered to be a commercial and critical success. But even after the role of Wally put Tony Dow in the spotlight, after the show ended, not many people were still thinking about him. Dow fell into depression after the show. Tony felt extremely frustrated after Leave it to Beaver ended. He didn't want to spend the rest of his life only ever being known as the person who once played Wally Cleaver. He felt he had just started getting his feet wet, but just as quickly as he achieved a bit of fame, it appeared as if his career had already dried up. This is a fairly typical experience, unfortunately, for child stars. Rarely are they able to actually have thriving careers in show business in their adulthood. Some lucky stars like Ron Howard, for example, managed to break this stereotype but the chances of actually pulling that off are pretty slim. After Beaver, Dow began making guest star appearances on various TV shows and made a handful of film appearances as well. In 1977, he parodied his Beaver years in a witty courtroom segment in the comedy film Kentucky Fried Movie. At the time, he figured there wasn't any harm in lampooning the character that had launched his career, as he had no plans to reprise the role. But he actually returned to the role of Wally in the 1980s, first for a reunion TV film and later in the reboot series The New Leave it to Beaver. After that series wrapped, Dow started directing episodes of television such as Coach, The New Lassie, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and Babylon 5. For the latter, he also served as visual effects supervisor. 
He likewise oversaw the special effects of a Doctor Who television film that appeared on Fox in the 90s. From the moment he chose to appear on Leave it to Beaver, Dow lost much of the control he had over his life and career. By the time he was 12, Tony was being told what he could and couldn't do, be it on the set of Leave it to Beaver or at home by his parents, who doubled as his managers. He felt like he had lost control, and this resulted in a unique form of grief that he had to learn to deal with for years. Even to this day, Dow admits that at age 76, he still struggles with depression. Dow's depression translated into anger. Depression left untreated can lead to anger. The inverse is true as well. For Tony Dow, he learned this the hard way. But by learning about what he was experiencing and seeking help, he was gradually able to heal. One of the major sources of support whom Dow has relied upon has been his wife, Lauren Shulkind. She was the one who showed Tony that goodness still existed in his life. Over the years, Shulkin, who works as an artist, has supported her husband's artistic aspirations. She's also done her best to remind him that being closely associated with his role of Wally isn't always a bad thing. Wally is a character known for being gentle and kind-hearted, two traits that are pretty admirable. Dow has found purpose in life in his later years by sculpting bronze statues. He works on these abstract pieces in a studio space that he shares with his wife. While artistic expression has helped him keep his depression at bay, so has medication and therapy. Dow was hospitalized in 2021. In August of last year, Tony Dow was hospitalized with pneumonia. USA Today reported on August 30th that he was up and walking around and that his doctors believed he would make a full recovery and return home quickly. Fortunately, they were right. After the news broke that he'd been hospitalized, Lauren Shulkin thanked his fans for all their support throughout these trying times while promising she would keep the public updated on Tony's health. For someone in their 70s, pneumonia can sometimes be a death sentence, so it's certainly good to hear Tony was able to recover from it. At the moment, Dow hasn't done much in the way of acting, directing, or producing. The last thing he appeared in as an actor was the 2003 film Dickie Roberts, former child star. In 2019, he was seen promoting Leave it to Beaver and several other classic TV shows on the MeTV television network. The Kid Next Door We Knew and Loved Born in 1948, Rusty Stevens made his mark on television history through the eyes of Larry Mondello, Beaver Cleaver's unforgettable sidekick. Though Stevens had dabbled in a few small roles on TV prior to his time on Leave it to Beaver, it was this unforgettable character that really put him on the map. Appearing in a notable 67 out of the series' 234 episodes between 1957 and 60, Stevens became a familiar face on a show that was nothing short of groundbreaking. It was one of the first shows to offer a kid's eye view of the world. Unlike other shows of the time that focused on adult narratives, this series gave a spotlight to the younger generation and their trials and tribulations. Here, Larry Mondello wasn't just a sidekick, he was an essential part of that child-focused lens. Larry was the kid next door we all knew and loved. The one who wasn't afraid to get into a little bit of mischief, but had a heart of gold. He made mistakes, but that's what made him so relatable. Larry was curious, a bit naive, and always willing to follow Beaver into whatever adventure or trouble lay ahead. In many ways, he served as a mirror to Beaver's own innocence, amplifying the central theme of the show of the wonder and complexities of childhood. His friendship with Beaver showcased the ups and downs of growing up, teaching both the characters and the viewers important life lessons along the way. From mishaps that led to teachable moments to escapades that tested the bonds of friendship, Larry was more than just a character. He was a vital part of what made Leave it to Beaver a genuine and enduring slice of Americana. Rusty's Departure Explained Numerous theories have been tossed around as to why Rusty Stevens left the iconic show so abruptly and seemingly unceremoniously. These include family moves to stage mothers and even potential movie stardom. But before diving into his own words, let's look at some of the stories that have been floating around. One popular rumor is that Rusty left to pursue a career in theatrical films, particularly after his role in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Another claims that Rusty's father was transferred out of state, prompting the family to move and causing Rusty to leave the show. Then there's the narrative about Rusty's mother being an overbearing stage mother, a story that, according to some accounts, even came from Barbara Billingsley, who played June Cleaver. 
Rusty recently took to the official Leave It to Beaver group to set the record straight, dismissing most of the stories as either exaggerated or flat out wrong. He explains his role in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof did not influence his departure. He was on Leave It to Beaver for two more years after the movie. Secondly, he debunked the tale about his father being transferred. According to him, this move didn't occur until several years after he left the show. He also refuted the story about his mother being a stage mother, going as far as to mention she wasn't even on set most of the time. So why did Rusty leave? According to him, it all boiled down to his growing disconnect from his school friends and normal childhood activities. The more popular his character became on the show, the more time he had to spend on set, often missing out on the social milestones that most kids experience. While this didn't hurt him academically, it was impacting his social life, and it began to weigh on him. This growing sense of isolation eventually led Rusty to be upfront with his parents about his desire to leave the show. His parents listened and ultimately supported his decision. This whole experience makes it clear that leaving the show wasn't a quick, spur-of-the-moment choice, but a complex situation that involved Rusty's well-being and his family's support. He finished his heartfelt explanation by saying he doesn't regret the choices made, emphasizing that leaving the show was a difficult but necessary step for him at the time. While he did continue to act in a few TV shows after Leave it to Beaver, the show remains a mostly positive memory for him. Even so, seeing another actor sitting in what used to be his spot on set did bring a tear to his eyes. Rusty went missing for years For years after Rusty Stevens left the spotlight, he was like a ghost. One minute he's a familiar face on Leave it to Beaver, the next he's gone, vanished from Hollywood and the public eye. Stevens' family moved to Pennsylvania, trading the glitz and glamour of LA for a more ordinary life. What could have been a long-lasting career in acting was abruptly cut short, leaving fans and co-stars baffled. Among those who couldn't forget Rusty was Jerry Mathers, who played Beaver. And in fact, he made it his mission to track down Rusty. In an interview from 1982, Mathers mentioned it had been nearly impossible to find his former co-star. Quote, nobody could find him for the longest time. For Mathers, it was like looking for a needle in a haystack, but he never gave up. Then, in a twist that seems straight out of a TV script, Mathers finally located Stevens. And where did he find him? Working a regular job as a car insurance salesman in New Jersey. No longer in the limelight, Rusty had built a new life far from Hollywood. Mathers was able to convince Stevens to step back into the world of Leave it to Beaver one more time for a reunion movie in 1983. He even made a few guest appearances on episodes of the new Leave it to Beaver. For Stevens, it must have felt like he was slipping back into an old, comfortable pair of shoes. According to Mathers, the two friends never lost touch again after that. It was a journey full of ups and downs, questions, and a few answers, but in the end, he was able to find his long-lost friend. Where is he now? After leaving the world of acting, Rusty chose a different path. He went on to higher education and even served in the military. Clearly, fame and fortune weren't the only things on his mind. Instead, he pursued a life that was less flashy, but perhaps more fulfilling. Years later, after Mathers located him, he did make that brief return to television, taking part in the 1983 reunion movie and those episodes of the new Leave it to Beaver. But those were merely pit stops in a life that was far removed from Hollywood sparkle. Rusty decided early that stepping away from the public eye was best for his mental and emotional well-being. Today, he lives a tranquil life with his wife in a small, peaceful township on the East Coast. No longer in the limelight, he's happy with where he's at. Rusty does still take moments to relive his past, though, enjoying episodes of Leave it to Beaver whenever the nostalgia hits. He keeps in touch with Mathers, sharing memories and cherishing their friendship, which has proven to be long-lasting. After all the twists and turns, Rusty is content, having built a life that is rewarding as it is low-key. Early Childhood Stanley Fofara was born in 1949 in San Francisco to parents without any entertainment industry connections. Nevertheless, his mother was determined to turn her sons into stars. When Stanley's elder brother Lucas, Tiger Fafara, showed a flair for performance, she pushed him into the world of acting first at age seven. He started landing small roles in commercials and TV westerns. 
Riding on her son's initial success, Stanley's mother brought the brothers to a large open casting call for a new suburban family sitcom called Leave it to Beaver in 1957. While Tiger took the lead to audition for one of Beaver's friends, casting directors were unexpectedly drawn to eight-year-old Stanley's natural charm and stage presence. Though quiet and letting his older brother take charge until then, the young boy clearly had talent that shined brighter on that day. He landed the recurring role of Hubert Whitey Whitney, one of Beaver's mischievous best friends. Tiger was also signed on to play another schoolmate, the nerdy Tui Brown. And so began parallel acting journeys for the Fafara brothers. Stanley's childhood combined two exciting worlds. When not filming, he attended public schools near his suburban L.A. home. But the structure and rules that govern typical 1950s boyhoods for his peers did not always apply on chaotic TV and movie sets. Surrounded by adult directors, producers, cameramen, and so on, Stanley grew up faster than his classmates. While perhaps stressful for some kids, most child stars get a thrill out of their unusual lifestyles. The opportunity to play make-believe combined with time off from school is extremely stimulating. Stanley took to acting easily and with great aplomb through nearly six continuous years on Leave it to Beaver. Whitey in Leave it to Beaver from 1957 through 63, Stanley charmed American audiences as Hubert Whitey Whitney on Leave it to Beaver. Set in suburban Renwood, the show provided amusing and heartwarming glimpses into 1950s middle-class family life through the eyes of Curious Beaver and his neighborhood gang of friends. Stanley's Whitey was a prominent member of this group with his blonde hair, cheerful disposition, and bent towards harmless mischief. Episode plots often involved Beaver and Whitey's schoolboy adventures and misadventures, joining the school football team, starting a stand-up comedy act, earning money to buy a toy boat, and so forth. Whitey pulled Beaver into crazy schemes, acted as his partner in crime for various hijinks, much to the exasperation of family members like Ward Cleaver, Beaver's strict but patient father, and even teachers. But Beaver could always count on kind-hearted Whitey to support him even when they ended up in trouble together. Through it all, Stanley delivered a scene-stealing, subtle comedic performance that earned Whitey a special place as one of America's favorite TV sons. Besides the main family show storylines, the producers created a rich world of friends and neighborhood characters. This included Stanley's own brother, Tiger, playing the shy, bespectacled Tui Brown, one of older brother Wally's friends. For about three years, the Fafara brothers got to act alongside each other, bringing to life two iconic boys in this nostalgic 1950s universe centered around Beaver's slow journey growing up. It was great fun for two normal brothers plunged rather unexpectedly into regular acting roles at a young age. Leave it to Beaver ended in 1963 after a successful six-year run and 234 episodes. The show left an indelible mark on American pop culture and ushered Jerry Mathers and Stanley Fafara into national stardom as archetypes of innocence, warmth, and humor against the backdrop of post-war suburban America. Post Leave it to Beaver Struggles the end of the show signaled major upheaval for lead child actors Jerry Mathers and Stanley Fafara. At just 14, their lives had revolved around the show for many years. Now in their early teens, both boys struggled without the show's structure and attention. Stanley attended North Hollywood High School after the show ended, but could not adjust easily to the regular school system after years on studio sets shaped by TV production rules. He yearned for his Leave it to Beaver days and associated fame perks. Unable to find substantial acting roles after age 14, Stanley felt the industry had discarded him. He began drinking heavily, moved briefly with popular band Paul Revere and the Raiders, and began using recreational drugs. Lacking parental support to steady life after stardom ended, he floundered through his mid-teen years, unable to replicate his early acting success. Like his co-star Jerry, who also suffered adjustment troubles, Stanley had not built skills to transition into regular adulthood. This lack of counseling for washed-up child celebrities during that era amplified struggles. He clung unsuccessfully to Hollywood fame remnants before his family urged a move to his sister's home in Jamaica. But Stanley continued substance abuse and could not sustain real-world jobs like painting. The former child star who had supported his family through his steady acting checks five years back was now aimless and addicted at barely 20 years old. Later Life and Downward Spiral 
Returning to L.A. in 1972, after years adrift, his life deteriorated steadily into a tragic sequence of addiction, petty crime, incarceration, and homelessness. He got married briefly in 1972, but it ended in divorce soon after. Unable to resurrect his acting career, Stanley resorted to dealing drugs as a means of income still chasing the high life fame once afforded. Throughout the 70s, he developed severe alcoholism and other substance dependencies, once confessing to a reporter that addiction troubles began as early as age 14, right after Leave it to Beaver ended. Despite growing up in a suburban middle-class comfort through steady earnings, the former child star was penniless and directionless just over a decade after his hit show ended. By the early 80s, his addiction troubles culminated in arrests for multiple pharmacy burglaries to fuel his narcotic needs. His parents bailed him after the seventh offense, but Sandley was sentenced to a year in prison following another burglary. Life didn't improve much after serving his sentence. He went back and forth between brief periods of employment like construction or restaurant work and returning inevitably to familiar vices. He relocated to Portland with a girlfriend in the mid-80s, only finding temp jobs between emerging himself in the drug underworld again. Heroin addiction, with attendant physical decline, followed through the late 80s and 90s. Almost four decades removed from Leave it to Beaver, he was now an obscure fallen star. The tragic end and gravestone there never was. After years of turmoil, he experienced a late-life epiphany in 95 and worked to conquer his substance abuse issues. He sought help at a Portland addiction recovery house, achieving sobriety for the first time in decades. He also reconnected with his daughter Tanya, an infant granddaughter. But it was revealed Stanley had contracted hep C during his heroin-addled years, which gradually deteriorated his health. He spent his final sober days quietly in a subsidized single-occupancy apartment in downtown Portland. On September 20, 2003, he passed away suddenly from complications during hernia surgery, coincidentally on his 54th birthday. In a tragic turn of events, the struggling actor couldn't afford a simple headstone after his death. Attendees of the small funeral passed around collection plates to cover the cost. The head of the Cleaver family was Ward Cleaver, played by Hugh Beaumont. Hugh was originally from Lawrence, Kansas, and went on to become a football star at the University of Chattanooga in Tennessee. He later received a master's degree in theology at University of Southern California. He began then his career as a clergyman and a lay minister. He began his acting career by participating in a Gateway to Hollywood competition. While this brought him acting gigs, at the time he wanted to prioritize his ecclesiastical duties over his acting work. In fact, at times he felt his acting work might conflict with his ideals as a man of God. Nevertheless, he continued taking acting gigs, making his name in many B-movies during the 40s. However, the role of a lifetime came when he was cast as Ward Cleaver in the 1950s sitcom Leave it to Beaver. Americans could relate to Ward as the all-American dad who took care of his family and provided many of the show's best laughs. He continued to have bit parts in TV shows following the end of Leave it to Beaver. Unfortunately, in 1972, he suffered a stroke that made him take fewer roles. It was during this time that he showed off his writing chops, managing to sell several radio and TV scripts to producers. He passed away from a heart attack in 1982 while visiting his son Eric in Germany. They say behind every great man is a great woman. Behind Ward Cleaver, there was his wife June, played by the inimitable Barbara Billingsley. Like Hugh Beaumont, she lived a full life before delving into her role as June Cleaver. She had worked as a model and spent much of her time as a single mother. These experiences made her perfect to play the loving mother on Leave it to Beaver. She landed the role after having bit parts in films such as The Bad and the Beautiful and Three Guys Named Mike. She was adored by Leave it to Beaver fans for her role as June, and after the show ended, she had bit parts that were quite similar to the role. She died of polymyalgia at age 94 in Santa Monica, California. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like, and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Stick around for more about the Leave it to Beaver cast. Of course, not all characters in the show were entirely wholesome. Each show needs at least one troublemaker to add some conflict and heighten the laughter. The troublemaker in Leave it to Beaver came in the form of Eddie Haskell, played by Ken Osmond. Eddie was Wally Cleaver's best friend and responsible for the gang getting into trouble. It seems as if Ken Osmond was destined to be an actor from day one. He began his acting career at age nine when he had a part in the film So Big, 
starring Sterling Hayden and Jane Wyman. This led to a series of bit parts in major films. He also had exposure to acting roles in TV early on. He had roles on shows such as The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet and The Loretta Young Show. In 1957, he was asked to audition for Eddie Haskell, who would be a one-off character in a new show called Leave it to Beaver. Ken auditioned several times before landing the role, but audiences loved Eddie Haskell. He eventually became one of the regular characters on the show, and it was the role that defined Ken Osmond. After the show ended, he continued to be typecast in similar roles. He took a long break from entertainment and worked as a police officer for the LAPD. After retiring from that, he returned to acting and had a few bit parts in films and TV shows. He also appeared as Eddie Haskell in reunion episodes of Leave it to Beaver. Osmond died in 2020 at age 76 from complications due to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and peripheral artery disease. Another great character from Leave it to Beaver was Clarence Lumpy Rutherford, played by actor Frank Bank. Lumpy was another one of Wally's friends and was known to be the bully character, but Frank Bank was known to be a gentle and kind person. He had bit roles in TV shows and a couple of films before landing the role of Lumpy. This became the role he was most known for, and he didn't get many offers after the show ended. He retired from acting and began his career as a bond broker in LA. He did make appearances in the new Leave it to Beaver and Leave it to Beaver reunions. He died of cancer at the age of 71 in 2013. Lumpy Rutherford's father was Fred Rutherford, played by Richard Deacon. He was known for bit parts on shows like The Dick Van Dyke Show and The Jack Benny Program. He also had small roles in films like Lay That Rifle Down and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Fred Rutherford was Ward Cleaver's obnoxious co-worker. His performance began the trope of the annoying co-worker that became a staple of so many sitcoms. Following Leave it to Beaver, Richard Deacon spent the rest of his career playing bit parts in feature films and popular shows. His film roles included work in Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, as well as other popular films like The Patsy, Deerheart, Blackbeard's Ghost, and Bad Manners. His TV appearances outside Leave it to Beaver included roles in The Lucy and Desi Comedy Hour, Bonanza, Get Smart, and The Addams Family. He passed away at age 63 from cardiovascular disease in LA. The main cast of Leave it to Beaver had another actress with a similar background to Hugh Beaumont. Madge Blake was also from Kansas, and her father was a Methodist circuit rider who discouraged her from pursuing a career in acting. Nevertheless, she became known as one of the most prominent character actresses for American film and TV. In the 50s, she had roles in shows such as City Detective, The Ray Milland Show, and It's a Great Life. She also played the infamous gossip columnist Dora Bailey in the classic film Singing in the Rain. She later had roles in The Real McCoys and The Jack Benny Program. Once she got the role as Margaret Mondello in Leave it to Beaver, she became a favorite to American audiences. Margaret was the mother to Larry Mondello, one of Beaver's closest friends. She beautifully played the role of the always nervous mother dealing with a not-so-bright son. As with Richard Deacon's portrayal of Fred Rutherford, Madge Blake's character became a popular trope for future American sitcoms. In addition to Leave it to Beaver, she had small parts in shows like Batman and I Love Lucy. She died in 1969 from a heart attack in Pasadena, California. From the main cast, Tony Dow, who played Wally, and Jerry Mathers, who played Beaver, are still with us. Tony never intended to be an actor, but after being spotted by a casting agent, he was asked to audition for Wally Cleaver. He became known as the older brother we all wished we had. Ironically, during the show's initial run, he never watched a single episode. He recalls the writers didn't want many of the child actors to watch the show, so that they didn't let fame get to their heads. Jerry Mathers will always be known as Theodore Beaver Cleaver, who represented the all-American boy. His portrayal of the character was impeccable, and will always be loved for representing a character from a bygone era. He was also a reluctant. He was also a reluctant actor, yet he still managed to give one of the greatest performances in American sitcom history, and we're grateful for it. 16-year-old Jerry Mathers was famous the world over as Beaver Cleaver, and with a successful career under his belt, he decided to focus on high school. He took a break from the limelight and led a normal life. In retrospect, this presented an ideal situation for the far-reaching rumors that were common at the time. The boy who was on TV for years had disappeared from the public eye. While this is quite common and nothing to be perturbed about today, it was scary back then, when young men were being drafted into the military and sent to Vietnam. While rumors were common in those times and are common even today within the entertainment industry, it makes you wonder who starts them. Like in this case, one wonders where the rumor of Mathers' death gained root. Keep watching to know about one possible source. Before we go ahead, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest content.
In 1966, high schooler Mathers signed up for the U.S. Air Force Reserve. While he was a celebrity and the news of his enrollment was bound to get to fans sooner or later, it was Mathers' appearance at the 1967 Emmys that made everyone aware of this development. Child actor Angela Cartwright and Mathers presented the Emmy to Gene Kelly at the award show, with Mathers looking strapping in his uniform and shaved head. Mathers continued in the reserve, where he was made sergeant, even after high school. Interestingly, Mathers wanted to join the Marines, but was told he wouldn't be sent into the thick of the action because they didn't want the negative publicity his possible death would bring. So, throughout his military career, Mathers never left U.S. soil. At the end of 1969, rumors of Mathers passing in Vietnam caught on. The root of these rumors? A certain private J. Mathers was killed in Vietnam and the Associated Press and United Press International mixed up the two Mathers and reported the star of Leave it to Beaver had died. But the ironic part is the wire services never made a mistake. The report of a Sergeant Mathers passing clearly listed the name as Sergeant E-5 Stephen Mathers of the U.S. Army Company B, 2nd Battalion, 28th Infantry, 1st Infantry Division, died on October 26, 1968. There was no confusion when the wire services reported this. The mix-up happened when the newspapers ran the story in 1969. What ensued was saddening, unexpected, and funny in equal parts. Mathers' friends, family, and fans had heard the rumor, and those who didn't know him and his whereabouts closely were mourning. Mathers, on the other hand, was enrolled at Cal Lutheran in San Fernando, where one morning he woke up to the news of his death. The story of the actual Sergeant Mathers, who had died in Vietnam, was all over the papers and radio, with the name and face of Jerry Beaver Mathers. Mathers' mother started receiving condolence calls, to which she promptly replied her son was well and happy. She even went so far as to clarify Jerry had never been stationed outside the U.S., and thus, of course, he had never seen any action. But rumors have always been easier to start and spread than to kill. This was all the more true for the rumor about Mathers' death, since the story spread like wildfire. The American public was shocked to hear of the innocent, cute, and naive beaver dying at war. It simply went against the grain. Mathers' friend and co-star from Leave it to Beaver, Stephen Talbot, recollects hearing the rumor for the first time and being heartbroken. The two had been close on the show and a little while after, till they went to separate high schools and eventually drifted apart. He didn't want to believe the news since it was mostly hearsay and not directly from his family and common friends. But then he conceded that there was so much violence and death at the time, it simply wasn't as shocking anymore. Talbot even expressed regret at not getting back in touch with Mathers when he saw the Emmys and noticed his military uniform. He felt he should have counseled his friend against fighting in the war, especially since he believed the war was unnecessary and unethical. When Talbot eventually realized the story of Mathers' death was only a rumor, he was relieved and decided to join the anti-war efforts with renewed vigor. From being a cadet in military school, Talbot became an anti-war activist who was arrested and even tear-gassed in protests. The rumor of his friend's death made him all the more sensitive to the many who weren't as fortunate and had actually been injured or died in Vietnam. Talbot himself was never drafted to fight in the war, thanks to Nixon's lottery system. At the time, the American public had mixed sentiment about America's role in the Vietnam War. Men were drafted into the military by the thousands, and everyone knew someone who had suffered in the war. People were getting antsy about the loss of American lives on such a magnitude, and even the overall state of unrest. Many claimed the war was unnecessary, and some went even so far as to say it was immoral. At such a tumultuous time, the rumor of Beaver's death did more than just break fans' hearts. It opened people's eyes. Americans who were on the fence in their stand about the Vietnam War were now either here or there. The rumor forced people to accept that death was a real possibility for anyone in a state of war. After all, if the innocent Beaver Cleaver, who was the very image of a peaceful America and Tom Sawyer in the flesh, could be brutally murdered on foreign soil, then so could others. Though no one can say for certain, many believe the rumor of Mathers' death in Vietnam started when Shelley Winters announced Beaver's death on a Tonight Show shortly after the other Sergeant Mathers died in 1968. But this story itself could well be another rumor, since there's no evidence of Winters appearing on a Tonight Show at the time, and the only one you can find is from when Mathers' rumored death was common knowledge. Jerry Mathers finally put a rest to the rumors when he appeared on the weekend segment of Saturday Night Live in 1980. Host Bill Murray was seen making fun of of him for getting himself killed in Vietnam. Murray, Mathers, and Tony Dow do a bit where Murray pretends he started the rumor since Leave it to Beaver had ended and he sought attention. It was a small segment, but it did the job. People had finally seen him on screen and had to believe the truth. 
Mathers graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy from the University of Cal, Berkeley, in 1973. After that, he worked as a commercial loan officer, a disc jockey, and made his way back into entertainment through theater. He starred in the comedy play Boeing, Boeing in Kansas City and toured the theater circuit in So Long, Stanley. He has since appeared in many films and TV shows, the most recent of which were Mother Goose Parade and Will to Power in 2008. On a personal front, Mathers married three times and has two daughters and a son with his second wife. He was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in 1996, after which he lost 40 pounds and became a diabetes advocate. Despite Mathers' other appearances on the big and small screens, his most memorable performance remains in Leave it to Beaver. The American actor even reprised his role of Beaver in 1983, Still the Beaver, a reunion film. The TV reunion film's success gave way to a sequel series, the new Leave it to Beaver in 1984, which ran on the Disney Channel and then Superstation WTBS. The show did a total of four seasons and ended in 1989. The sequel did well, but not as well as the original Leave it to Beaver. If you haven't seen the show yet, you can always stream an episode online to see what was so special about it. He landed the role of Wally with no acting experience. Tony Dow was born in Hollywood, California on April 13, 1943. His father was a designer and general contractor, while his mother was a stunt woman who worked in early westerns. At one point, she was even Clara Bow's movie double. As a boy, Dow trained as a swimmer and was even a junior Olympics diving champion. Dow's acting career began after he landed the role of Wally Cleaver in Leave it to Beaver in an open casting call. When he showed up to the audition, Dow had next to no acting experience and was still very much your average American 12-year-old boy. He continued to perform on the iconic sitcom for six years until it ended in 1963. After the series ended, he appeared on various other series, including Dr. Kildare, The Greatest Show on Earth, My Three Sons, Mr. Novak, and Never Too Young. After high school, Dow enlisted in the U.S. National Guard, where he served his country from 1965 to 68. During this time, he took a break from acting, but returned to Hollywood after he was discharged. Upon his return to acting, he guest starred in the series Love American Style, Square Pegs, The Hardy Boys, and Adam 12. In 1969, he married his first wife, Carol Marlowe. That marriage lasted 11 years before they divorced in 1980. They had one child together, Chris, born in 1973. Tony married his second wife, Lauren Shulkind, in June of 1980. Throughout the 70s, Dow continued to act while working in the construction industry on the side. He knew he couldn't expect to rely on television income forever, so he expanded his horizon to work in construction. He also studied journalism and filmmaking. From 1983 to 89, he reprised his role as Wally in the Leave it to Beaver TV reunion film and its subsequent spin-off series, The New Leave it to Beaver. In 1986, Tony even wrote an episode of the show. The following year, he was honored by the Young Artist Foundation with its prestigious former child star Lifetime Achievement Award. After that series wrapped, Dow made his directorial debut with an episode of yet another reboot series, The New Lassie. Following that, he directed episodes of shows like Coach, Harry and the Henderson, Babylon 5, and Crusade. He also served as the visual effects supervisor on Babylon 5. In 1996, he provided the visual effects for the Doctor Who television film that aired on Fox. His most recent acting role was in the 2003 film Dickie Roberts, Former Child Star. Following that appearance, he was seen in April of 2019 promoting reruns of Leave it to Beaver on the MeTV television network. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Dow is a skilled sculptor. Tony is a gifted sculptor who enjoys creating bronze sculptures. In reference to his work, he's been quoted as saying, the figures he creates aren't meant to represent reality, but instead reflect the truth of the interactions he experiences as he sees and feels them. To create his works of art, Dow says he sources the wood he uses in the hills of the Topanga Canyon in Southern California. He says each piece flows from his subconscious. Dow has produced nine limited editions of each of his works using what's known as the lost wax process while utilizing molds from the original Burl sculptures. One of his pieces was once on display in the backyard garden of his former Leave it to Beaver co-star Barbara Billingsley, who you might remember as June Cleaver. In December of 2008, Dow was chosen as one of three sculptors to display their work at the Société Nationale des Beaux Arts exhibition at the Carousel de Louvre in Paris. At that exhibit, he represented the U.S. delegation, which was made up of artists from the Karen Lynn Gallery. The piece that was selected to be displayed was an abstract titled Unarmed Warrior. It depicted a woman holding a shield. 
Tony has been battling health issues for years. In the 1990s, Tony revealed he'd been suffering from clinical depression. He later starred in a series of self-help videos that chronicled his battle with this debilitating condition, including the 1983 film Beating the Blues. In October of 2021, Tony was hospitalized after coming down with pneumonia. Six months later, in May of 2022, he revealed he had cancer. And as we all know by now, especially after being erroneously reported to be dead, Dow is now spending his final days in a hospice in Topanga, California. Jerry Mathers is still alive and well. It's impossible to discuss Leave It to Beaver without bringing up the show's titular star, Beaver Cleaver. The Beaver was played by actor Jerry Mathers. After hearing the reports that Tony Dow had passed away, Mathers told the press that the loss of his TV brother left an empty place in his heart. He went on to describe Dow as being the kindest, most generous, loving, gentle, sincere, and humble man he's ever known. He said the world may have lost a star, but the heavens gained another. Jerry has yet to put out a statement following the announcement that Tony is still alive. Like Tony, Jerry got his start as an actor at an early age. After appearing as a child model for a department store ad at age two, he starred in a commercial for Pet Milk. He went on to appear in films such as This Is My Love and Alfred Hitchcock's The Trouble With Harry. Not long after, he landed the role of the title character on Leave It to Beaver. Apparently, at his audition, he told the producers he would rather be at his Cub Scout meeting. They found his candid honesty so endearing, they immediately handed him the role without hesitation. Mathers played the Beaver for six years. He later reprised his role in the reunion film and reboot series just as Tony had. In 1978, he starred with Tony Dow in a production of the comedy Boeing Boeing. After that, he and Tony toured the dinner theater circuit with a production of So Long Stanley. It's heartbreaking to learn Tony Dow is in such dire straits. We send his friends and family our best wishes as they comfort him during these challenging times. Tony's Rise to Fame Anthony Lee Dow was born in Hollywood on April 13, 1945. He grew up in Van Nuys in L.A., and his father, John Stevens Dow, was a home builder. His mother, Muriel Montrose, was a Senate bathing beauty from Max Senate's silent films. She even served as a body double for screen idol Clara Bow. Tony rose to fame as Wally Cleaver in Leave it to Beaver from 1957 to 63. He had no interest in show business and never thought he'd get the role. Leave it to Beaver was never a rating success, but it thrived in syndication. Its gentle humor and expert cast helped it thrive longer in syndication than other hits of the era, like The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet or Father Knows Best. Tony was a standout member of the cast because of his acting ability and his looks. The producers decided to promote him as the next teen idol, and it worked. He'd receive over 1,000 fan letters every week at the peak of Leave it to Beaver's success. A major hit like that could only last so long, and he eventually had to move on to other opportunities. What he didn't realize was how important and enduring the part of Wally would be in his life. Leaving Leave it to Beaver Coming off such a hit show didn't guarantee him anything. His next parts were mostly guest starring spots. He appeared on shows like Adam 12, Love American Style, Knight Rider, Square Pegs, The Mod Squad, The Hardy Boys, and Emergency. Tony then served in the California Army National Guard from 1965 to 68 during the Vietnam War. He was assigned to the Special Services Division and was a photographer for the Headquarters and Headquarters Company, 40th Armored Division. He tried a bit of everything in the 70s. He continued acting while working in construction and studying journalism and filmmaking. This was when the role of Wally came back into his life. He parodied the famous teen in 1977's The Kentucky Fried Movie. He even returned for reboots, including the new Leave it to Beaver. He directed five episodes of the show and wrote one while continuing to act in other projects. Critics didn't love the new show, but Tony defended its relevance in a changing culture. He said in an interview with the Houston Chronicle that the situations Beaver and his family got into were more relatable and true to real life than modern ones full of drugs and violence. He even called the stories it portrayed, quote, the essence of growing up. He got opportunities to work with his co-stars beyond that, including working with Jerry Mathers in the 1978 stage production Boeing Boeing. He also began to work hard behind the camera. His other productions included Harry and the Hendersons, Coach, Babylon 5, and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. He helped create shows like General Hospital, Mr. Novak, Never Too Young, Lassie, and Love American Style. Leaving Hollywood 
Tony began to get depressed in his 20s. He created a self-help video called Beating the Blues to help others who felt the same. The message he hoped to give them was that if Wally Cleaver can be depressed, anyone can be. He also began to experience health complications. He tried to work for 20 more years until he willingly stepped out of the spotlight in his 40s. Leave it to Beaver did not make Tony rich despite its lasting impact. He only received four years of residual payments. That's why he found other passions to fill the time and earn a bit of money. One of his favorites was sculpting. He worked in bronze casting, and you can find his projects on the Tony Dow Sculpture website. He was even part of a December 2008 exhibition in the Carousel de Louvre, and his sculpture Unarmed Warrior sits in the Parisian shopping mall. His Family Tony's first marriage was to Carol Marie Teresa Marlowe in 1969. They had a son named Christopher in 73 and were together until 1980. Lauren Shulkind is a mosaic artist born in New York. She met Tony in the 70s when she helped him get cast in the McDonald's commercial. She was surprised he thought she was cool enough to be with such a major star. His down-to-earth and humble nature was part of what attracted him to her. They were quickly married June 16, 1980. Lauren also accepted his son Christopher into their family. He briefly shows up in the revival of his father's famous show as a younger version of Wally in two episodes of The New Leave It to Beaver. He has had no acting credits since then and prefers to avoid the limelight. Tony also got to become a grandfather and has proudly shared his joy about it on social media. One photo shows all the generations of his family with his son standing behind him with his granddaughter Tyla. Another shows them all smiling together with the caption, Happiness is grandkids. A more somber post came after Tony and Lila's 42nd wedding anniversary. It asked fans to keep Tony in their thoughts as he underwent immunotherapy. He'd been diagnosed with cancer for the second time in May of 2022. The Fake Death Announcement on July 26, 2022, Tony Dow's official Facebook page released an announcement that he had died. It even included a full obituary. It noted how he was a beautiful soul with a comforting manner that made everyone fall in love with him. Fans were distraught until Tony's manager came forward to reveal the truth. His wife Lauren had posted the news in error. His son Christopher and daughter-in-law Melissa came to confirm the mistake. The truth was that Tony had been diagnosed with liver cancer. He was alive but had been in hospice care, going in and out of the hospital for treatment. Lauren apologized for the confusion. She also expressed her continued love for her husband of over 40 years and willingness to stay by his side. His Real Death Tony Dow died at age 77, July 27, 2022. Christopher announced it only a day after the fake post was deleted and a new one replaced it. Tony's family was with him throughout his long and arduous cancer battle. They were there to provide support while he was in hospice during his final hours. Lauren said she lost the love of her life. Their 45 years together were like a fairy tale because their love only got stronger over time. She posted another message 12 months later, marveling at how she'd survived without him and listing all his beautiful qualities. Christopher said he knew his father was in a better place. He called him, quote, the best dad anyone could ever ask for, as well as a coach, mentor, voice of reason, best friend, and hero. Family members weren't the only ones to express their condolences and tell the world what a wonderful person Tony was. Jerry Mathers, who played the title character on his famous show, said he was glad to know each other for 65 years and would miss Tony terribly. There was no shortage of messages of condolence and respect. A fan had once said few actors were as universally loved as Tony, and that alone said enough about his legacy. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Tony Dow? And what's your favorite episode of Leave It to Beaver? Let us know in the comments section below.